Those of you who watch my channel on a regular basis will know that I've done lots of experiments with trying to make bubble tubes in the past and my goal has been to make a methylene chloride bubble tube that happily runs at just hand temperature like this one. And this is my first ever successful methylene chloride bubble tube because I just made this today. And I'm going to show you how I made it. Now, I haven't ever seen any DIY projects from making bubble tubes on the internet or YouTube, so I think this is a first. So that's good. So where's my notepad? In here's how I did it. I'll just put that uh, down there. I got a fluorescent tube and I cut the ends off the fluorescent tube. I used a, a file to just scratch a notch in them um, and then snapped them off. It was quite messy, it didn't go particularly cleanly. Then I used a, a swab to actually, uh, basically, if that's the tube, I put a, a wire down with a hook in the end, put a piece of kitchen towel over the end and dragged it through and that took all the phosphor off the tube leaving the clear glass. I then um, took that section of glass and pulled it off to a point at the bottom using a blowtorch until it separated and then I pressed the bottom against a piece of wood, something thermally not terribly conductive so it uh, allows the glass to be shaped and that gave this sort of flat bottom here. I say it's flat, it's not perfectly flat, it's a bit um, irregular but you know it gave a sort of flattish base. Then I poured some rock salt in. Now I tried other things. I tried various other experiments with a rolled up piece of wad of kitchen towel and that produces lots of small bubbles. But I think rock salt is actually one of the best. Uh, so I uh, poured the rock salt in to the bottom. And then I tapered, using the blowtorch again, I tapered the tube like this because I was going to tip it off at that point. Now, in a previous experiment, I filled it up with methylene chloride and then tried tapering it um, from the full width uh, and pulling it off. Uh, but uh, that, for some reason, the, the vapour from the methylene chloride started reacting and burning. And you ended up with a sort of metallic finish in the inside the glass. It was a bit unpleasant and a bit fumy as well. So uh, completely empty at the moment apart from the rock salt at the bottom. The reason I, I put the rock salt in first was because this is going to taper down to a, quite a thin line and the rock salt wouldn't go through it. And then the regular end I um, heated that so it actually smoothed it off and uh, it kind of folded in just a little bit as well which is also good as a good result. Uh, that's um, this bit here. And this is the bit, other t section of the taper. So then I put the, the uh, I was going to say ferric chloride, that's wrong, the methylene chloride in up to a height that um, it w wasn't too near where it was going to be tipped off because if you apply the flame and the methylene chloride's near, then it will suddenly boil and spray up and it could actually cause the glass to shatter at that point because the glass is hot and it's hit by the cold solvent. But before tipping it off, I wanted to draw a vacuum. Now, I tried it without a vacuum and I just couldn't get it to boil at hand temperature. It took quite a high temperature to get this to boil. Um, so to get it to boil at the lower temperature, I had to pull a vacuum. And the good news is that it doesn't take that much of a vacuum to do this. Uh, you can do it with very simple equipment. In my case, I got a plastic sleeve which uh, is actually designed for joining two sections of the uh, traditional tungsten or LED tube light for Christmas lights. So I got this plastic sleeve and I resined a pipe into the end of it. And to resin that in, if this is a sleeve, I put, a, this is silicon aquarium tubing, so I put that in to the end and I also put a stiff liner down the middle of it, which was the insert from a gel pen uh, that had been used up, a sort of just a standard gel ballpoint pen, because it was the right diameter to just push in there and it holds it rigid. I then put blue tack round the bottom here to seal it, uh, the white tack actually, because you can still see a bit of it, and then uh, before pouring the resin in I stuffed a bit of uh, insulated wire down the middle of the pipe just to stop any resin going down. 
the being PVC wire, if any resin got on it, the PVC will just separate from the resin. I poured the resin down to seal that and then removed that uh, bit of wire, leaving me with this arrangement. So I've got this pipe now going into this and it's a good tight seal. I also put this tie wrap round just to uh, sort of basically pinch it in a little bit because the resin doesn't stick to the, the polythene plastic uh, completely and I thought that would just be an extra means to stop it sliding. Then I heated the end up gently to soften the plastic and squeezed it over the top of the glass, noting that this this is the end that had been rounded first. So uh, with the heat, the gl because otherwise if the, the glass is sharp, the the plastic just won't go on easily. It all gets a bit crunchy and unpleasant. Yes, I tried those experiments too. And uh, to draw the vacuum, I simply used a syringe, as I'd done in previous experiments. I put the syringe on, and then I pulled the syringe out to draw the vacuum, and you can see it's got a vacuum because it's trying to go in itself, and I held it out and pinched the tube off. Then I pulled the syringe off, reset it in, put it back on, released the blue tube, pulled more of a vacuum, and every time I was doing this, I was getting bursts of bubbles from the bottom of this tube, uh, more and more bursts of bubbles, and I, I, after a while I experimentally just uh, left it, um, with the partial vacuum and I tried heating it and it did start boiling with the hand temperature. So I kept uh, drawing that until the blue silicon tube was actually going flat. It wasn't able to actually really take the pressure of the, of the vacuum anymore. And basically I just pulled as much as I could out without uh, completely blocking up. And that turns out to be absolutely fine. Um, once I'd finished that, I... Um, just left the syringe on, and at that point I it was a bit clumsy, but I tipped it off with the blowtorch, uh, basically hold, rolling this backwards and forwards in front of the flame, and then uh, pulling it apart. And ideally, it would have just gently closed, and you'd have got a perfect sort of tip like you get on neon tubes. But uh, no, my mine's a bit messy. I'm very glad it didn't pull in because that would have spoiled the vacuum. But um, it has. Uh, made it completely vacuum tight and I now have my bubble tube so um, yeah that's uh, definitely worth experimenting with it's a good result all round